Hi, Paul Beckwith here again. On my uh, storm chasing road trip, we didn't see any of those spinny things which we went to see, but you know, it was a good trip, vacation. We saw lots of uh, huge uh, storms, lots of hail, um, fortunately not uh, damaging the rental car. We also saw these structures appearing underneath the wall cloud, sort of, of the storms that gen do are known for generating tornadoes and, you know, these things, you know, little spinny things and stuff, but they don't touch the ground. They're not tornadoes. So anyway, um, I don't know if this means I have to go every year to uh, see one. The only tornado I saw, you know, you go into a museum or a supermarket or something, and they have this yellow box, like a yellow phone booth like box. And you put in, you put in a buck and uh, it generates category one winds for you. So, you know, we saw one of those machines, but we didn't even go in it this year. We did, we did last year. But uh, anyway, it was a good trip, but very tiring. Lots of driving. You know, we uh, spent two nights in, in um, motels and the other three nights were a combination of sleeping in the car and uh, just being in the casino, uh, playing casinos, playing blackjack. Uh, you know, I wanted to hopefully pay for the trip from my blackjack prowess, but you know, it worked, it worked well for a little bit, but then of course, uh, you know, and then, it cr and then you crater after a bit. So, you know, I'm not talking about large amounts of money, just small amounts, just having some fun taking some time off from abrupt climate change. And, uh, you know, if you're wondering why there was a hiatus in my, in my videos, I was, I'm getting too many people saying, what's going on, Paul? Are you ill? Are you, uh, you know, throwing in the towel on climate change and becoming a Tibetan monk or something? So no, I'm back. So let's, I'm on to sea ice here. So the daily ice volume, the PO mass is a combination model data and this is 2017 in red, and red is not doing too well. We're way under the mean between 79 and 2016. The standard deviation or the variation here, I don't know, this is like two sigma or something, three sigma or something like that. It's a variability of all the other years and more recent years are at the, low, all at the lower end. This year blows away other years. The ice is very thin the ice is the extent of the ice is lower and uh the ice is uh you know call it uh arctic uh, sea slushies instead um it's uh there's very little old ice there very little multi-year ice which is very important because it's a lot softer it's more fractured it's got brine pockets within the ice so it's like honeycombed with salt brine pockets and these brine pockets, as the ice ages, if it's able to age, work their way by gravity out through the bottom of the ice, leaving the ice a lot pure. Um, anybody living up in the Arctic knows, you know, if you want to break up some ice and melt it down for drinking water, you want to find the toughest, oldest ice. And there's very little of that left in, in the Arctic. So, highly recommend uh, Peter Wadhams' book, A Farewell to Ice. So we're not doing too well here for ice and it's getting worse. So if we look at the, if we look at the data for each year, the, this is the minimum Arctic ice volume each year is the black curve coming up to here. The red curve is an exponential fit through all of the data from, from the beginning, 79 satellite era, and it goes to zero about 2020, the summer of 2021 or so. Now, what you can do is say, okay, if the ice melt rate is accelerating, then instead of fitting an exponential to all the data, start fitting it to data, you know, say in the last, in the last 15 years, in the last 14 years, 13 years. So that's what all these colors are, okay? So this is fitting ice to more recent years, and then you get a spread here, and you can see the spread you know, here we are in 2017, summer of 2017. You know, so if this rate in the last 15 years of exponential design, uh, decline continues, then we're talking about no sea ice very soon. Certainly, probably before 2020, 
we're going to have a summer with no sea ice. Okay, a blue ocean event. That's a huge, of huge importance because the, the Arctic will no longer be a refrigerator. Okay, it keeps the temperature close to zero when ice is melting. Without the ice there, the temperature will skyrocket. So this curve here, the black curve, is now on this graph here as the green curve. Okay, so that's the September curve. Well, this is the minimum uh, extent and this is a September average. So it's, it's, very, it's very close to the previous graph, but not exactly identical. Now, the, the, um, the, the mauve here and the purple, or the pinkish, reddish, whatever, and the purple, those are the months bracketing September. So that's October and August, October being purple. Okay, so they're all tracking down. So what you can see is when this goes to zero, the warming will accelerate. So that's, you know, no ice in September, first year, say 2020. And then within a few years, there's no ice September, August, September, October. And then within a few more years, you can add um, June. And you can add June, there's July, June, November, I guess, November and so you just keep adding, you know, September, then the month on either side, then the month on either side of that, month on either side. You can see where that's going. You know, the additional feedback, you like to pull this whole thing down, no sea ice year round. I say within a, within a decade of the first blue ocean event. Why is this so important? This is, this is vitally important because it's the, the, all the weather patterns on the planet, the atmospheric circulation patterns will go haywire. They'll be nothing like what they are now. So the big question is, what will they look like? Will jet streams exist even when we have no sea ice in the Arctic? What we're getting is an equalization of temperature with latitude. And uh, unfortunately, if there's no jet stream or very slow jet stream, you know, what's to stop the, this? What's to stop fire hosing these little loops, for example? ocean to land to ocean to land right very hot temperatures so the oceans pick the ocean evaporation is creating huge moisture that goes over the land and rains and you get this loop and you get you know you could have rainstorms lasting months for example you know if there's nothing to displace that particular pattern that particular pattern can set up and basically like you know it, we really need to try to you know, I, spend, I do spend a lot of time in, in thought over the best way to explain this and the best way to understand, you know, it, will this actually happen? Or will there be weak jet streams? Will the jet streams in the Northern Hemisphere be permanently bonded to the Southern Hemisphere ones, giving them some structure, some different structure that is very, you know, where, where the, the land-ocean contrast um, becomes sort of a dominant feature? Okay, so this is the world we're heading to. You know, and where are you heading? You end up unless you do something different. Okay, so Arctic sea ice extent. So this is the extent. This is just the area, you know, you're looking down from a satellite. If there's 15% of sea ice in an area, you mark, yes, it's there. And if it's less than 15, no. So this is what we were having, what we're having in 2016 here. Um, this is the 2012, which set a lower minimum. So we didn't get quite as low as 2012, but we get all this fluctuation here and then we go here this is what's happening th this year if you extend this curve out this is what's happening here um, and uh, so this is a, to sort of uh, third week of May or so and uh, you know we've back come back onto the two Sigma um, curve two standard deviation curve but we're trailing along the bottom of it and it's much lower than, than 2012 when we had the record minimum in September. So this year is going to be very interesting. Again, a given year, it depends on a lot of factors. You get melting of the ice from the warm air temperatures above, from the warm ocean below. You get export out the Fram Strait, um, Bering Strait perhaps. You get also you get uh, warm water from the Pacific going through the Bering and warm water from the Atlantic going through into the Arctic, all of these factors determine how much ice is gonna be left at the September minimum 
And these things are all rapidly conspiring to get rid of ice, including ice just wiggling out through the Canadian archipelago, which it never used to do when it was multi-year and ridges would build up. Okay, so it's going. It's going, going. You know, the question is gone. This summer, probably before 2020, here is the sea ice age at the end of March, okay? When the ice is the thickest and it starts to melt. So this is from 84 to 2017. This is, that, this is first year ice, the blue. More and more first year ice. A little bit less second year ice. Little, you know, sl about the same third year, maybe slightly decreasing, slightly decreasing fourth year. Fifth year, getting massacred. Okay, this is the ice that is the toughest and hardest. As you go down here, there's more and more brine pockets, more and more honeycombing in the ice, weaker ice. With all first year ice, we can talk about a big uh, slush ball. And this is in uh, week 12 of 2016, the configuration, not much multi, not much five plus ice. And this is a week 12 of 2017, and you can see the changing distribution and uh, you know what's happening there. Okay, so this is very key. Why is this stuff going uh, so quickly? Well, it's warm there. Gee, you know, really warm, ice melts. So this is the temperature above 80 degree north for 2016 is the red compared to long-term average, the green line. Um, and what you see is you see these spikes in temperature here. This, we've been seeing this for quite a few years, but we haven't been seeing this. Look at these spikes here. Um, basically, the spikes here in temperature, if you track to this line, um, this is Julian days. So this is, this is January 1st is zero. 365 would be December 31st. Okay, so what you see is you see these huge spikes here, which would have happened you know, months earlier. So basically November 2016 uh, was 17, you know, approaching 20 above average, meaning it was still summer in the Arctic last November and December. So of course the ice will not form that well. Of course the ice is much thinner. It's primed to go rapidly. This is, now, it's not just the Arctic, okay? The Antarctic is doing bizarre things here. Look at the curve in 2017, record low. Look at the curve in 2015 and 2014, super high, you know, compared to the mean is the gray line and the interquartile and interdecile ranges. So the variation um, is uh, the, the spread, if you like. So we're going, you know, we, we've been increasing about one and a half percent per decade, the Antarctic sea ice. <coughs> it's because of the wind patterns changing. It's also because of lots of calving off Greenland and that ice you know, that gets pushed out. And also the Coriolis force tends to bring uh, the ice out and so on. There's lots of different reasons, but this is a weather weirding or global wilding or weather wilding or Bizarro, bizarro stuff happening, swings from one extreme to the other extreme, more variability. When you get a lot more variability, if you do a spectrum analysis on it, the frequency slows down so that when something's going up, it goes up for longer, it doesn't switch as quickly, so we get a critical slowing down. This often happens in systems that are about to burst. Okay, it happens in nonlinear systems that are about to uh, go through a phase change or, uh, you know, a, a change of state, you know, a very rapid um, jump in something. This is, add, add the Antarctic and Antarctic, add the Antarctic and Arctic ice, and this is the curve for 2016. Okay, you can see what, and then it, boom, it starts collapsing here. And then it continues on here. So much, much lower than all of the other years. This is bad news. Global sea ice area decreasing. Okay, low, you don't believe me on this. Go to Google Arctic sea ice graphs or go to, Ar go to the, and on that page, you can get US Navy stuff for, from this link. And you can see ice thickness, ice speed and drift, ice concentration, how it's behaving. Okay, so the Arctic is no longer 
the Arctic of the past, new territory.